I'm very pleased actually to be part of this uh, school and conference. It's been wonderful really, a wonderful city and beautiful one. And uh, as the last speaker, I really want to thank the scientific committee and organizers. Uh, so I invite you to actually clap for all of this. Uh, and I also want to invite you to thank uh, previous speakers, both in the schools and the conference, for a wonderful job they did, actually. Thanks. Okay, I, I know that it's quite late, actually, and uh, maybe mo most of us are tired. I'm tired, actually. I was sleeping for the last. Uh, <laughs> right, so this uh, talk will be actually, uh, it's a joint work with Steve Vickers here. Uh, uh, it's part of my PhD uh, uh, work and thesis, probably. Uh, it's some, yeah, much, much of it is actually in the spirit that Steve sketched here. Um, but there are also some new ideas, which, uh-huh. Thank you for, yeah, that was a Freudian thingy, yeah. Slip of tongue. Okay, let's go, if hopefully this works. So these are... I don't know if it's ideas or I, I think it's one idea actually. So, yeah. Um, let me read this. So, right. So, there are many constructions of topological spaces uh, in which, when you have a structure, that a structure actually gives uh, a map between some uh, geometrical uh, spaces actually that comes from those structures. So, for example, a very, very simple example is that when you have two distributive lattice, uh, and you have a map between them, right? You can consider the map of uh, spectrum, which is basically space consists of uh, prime filters of those distributive lattices, but the map goes uh, the other way around. So you start with the basically presentation of uh, algebraic structures and you get a map of spaces. I mean, this could be also described internally in any topos. Um, so more generally in topos theory, uh, we can actually uh, formalize this by saying that if you have a present, presenting a structure in, in an elementary topos E, this will give rise to another topos bounded over the first topos, right? Um, but as we re I remarked in the first place, this might actually have two different variances. It could be uh, contravariant, like the first example, or it could be covariant, which I will give examples later of these two differences. Uh, so this distributive license was a very uh, easy example, but this idea, this theme, runs through this uh, wonderful paper of, paper of uh, Boss Peters here, Steve Vickers and Sanders Walters, who is unfortunately not here, uh, which is about uh, this idea of Gelfand spectra, formalization of it uh, in topos setting. This was an era that people tried to use topos theory to study uh, non-commutative uh, non uh, CSR algebras, actually, by means of topos theory, and this idea of like, uh, you want to capture the spectrum of CSR algebra by looking at subcommutative CSR algebra of that algebra. And they had a very nice uh, topos formalization of it, and this idea was actually inside, so you can go and read it. Maybe, okay. So what we are going to do, we are going to formalize this idea here using classifying toposes. Um, so the, the main idea is that we use vibrations of toposes to formalize uh, the, the main idea here. But we, we also want to see at what, what happens at the level of logic, basically, not just because the notion of vibrations of toposes have been done before. But what we, are, we tried to do was uh, what, ha what is the logical, basically, counterpart of that, um, in much of the sense that uh, Olivia and Lauren and other people talked in this school. So let me introduce a notion of vibrations between two categories, actually inside two categories, and later I will introduce a two-category of toposes, and then this notion which will be here will be our notion of vibration between toposes, right? So these two categories will be very, very general. I don't, you will see that there's not much structure there. Um, but uh, before going there, I, the definition is very, very complicated. Well, not very complicated, somehow complicated. Uh, I want to simplify that definition by using, by introducing some two categorical abstract nonsense, right? Uh, so suppose uh, 
K is a true category, and D is a class of bicarable. By bicarable, I mean they have bi pullbacks along any other one cell. Sometimes people use a squareable, I think. Uh, yeah. uh, so we call them display one cells, and this is the one categorical version of this is something called comprehension categories, which gives a model of dependent type theories without identity. Uh, so I, ha I don't have any type theory here. I'm just using, I'm stealing that word. It, it will look like the di categorical diagrams look like. Uh, so the one cells are of this form. There is lower bar, which is a zero selling uh, K. Let me use this. This is a zero selling K. This is also zero selling K. This is one cell. And the, this one cell actually belongs to this class, subclass of uh, morphisms of K, right? Uh, two cells. So if you have a zero cell in here, uh, another zero cell in here, a two cell consists of a data, I mean, three pieces of data. There is F lower bar, one cell. This is uh, one cell in K, and this is an ISO two cell, basically. So this is what Steve was actually sketching here. This is, we are trying to formalize that idea. Um, now, if you have one, this front is squared, if, if it's a one cell, uh, and you have a back side one cell, then a two cell consists of one two cell in here and another two cell in here, such that the obvious diagram of two cells commute in K, right? It's coherent, basically. And you can compose these two cells and also one cells by just pacing together everything. There's nothing hard here. So I call this... Uh, No, slightly different than that, right, that's true. Um, right, so this two category uh, I denoted by KD, right, because the one cells, uh, if you remember, were actually part of uh, bicarable cells, display maps. Um, this is the two arrow category, which means that when you define one cells in here, they don't need to be part of K, uh, display maps. So, Bicarable is one cell, uh, such that it has pullbacks along other one cells into two categories. Yeah? Uh, by pullback, not just pullback. Uh, because as we will see, actually, this by, uh, in two categories of toposes, you don't have pullbacks. You have by pullbacks. So that's the point that I'm using here, emphasizing on this. Right. Now, this is uh, Johnson's definition, uh, which appeared in... Uh, do I give? Yeah, this, this is the reference of vibrations and partial products in two categories. You can also find this uh, definition in Elephant, uh, D441 or something like that. Uh, so now you have a two category. Uh, you, have, you start with P here, right? Uh, and you want to put some structures on P such that it renders P as a vibration. Um, so you say that if I have F and G, any, two, any one cells, in the two category, and any two cell between them, right? Uh, so you can construct this by pullback here. You can construct the backside by pullback, right? So far, you want to say, okay, so you want to say for any F, any G, any alpha, uh, you get a transport here, R alpha. Uh, you get either two cell here that connects this transport, and you get a general two cell up there. Now, if you understand F and G as sort of like uh, generalized elements of P, right? Uh, what this says is that you, can, you have a transport on the fibers, and this alpha bar is basically lift of alpha, right? Just, so just try to write this down for two categories of catch small categories, right? Um, and you, you see that so you get something close to gross endic vibration, but not exactly so because for growth and vibration, this is this tau alpha is equality. So what you, uh, you get actually, it's referred to a street vibration of one category. Okay. Now can we simplify this using that uh, by, uh, what was it? Comprehension two categories? Yes, we can, so let's do that. Um, right, so these are the remarks. Oh, yeah, of course you can define off, off vibrations, right, here. Um, if you just change the direction of R alpha, everything, every else is the same. Um, right. 
Uh, important point is that it does not require a strictness of two categories, which is a good news for us because we will consider two category toposes and <laughs> limits there are not as strict. Uh, it doesn't also require any comma object. That's also nice. And yeah, I mean, we didn't assume so much a structure on two categories, so it was very flexible definition. Uh, now I'm going to change some of the notations to upper bar and lower bar, yeah, to make it simple a bit. So this by pullback, I denote it as xf bar, and here is xf, because you pull x, pull back x along f, so you get xf. Yeah? Uh, so this is the notation, remember this, and we are doing a bit of magic here, let's see. Uh, right, now remember what the KD was, right? KD was sort of like a one-dimensional expansion of uh, k, basically. Yeah? So, so if you start with this data, fg, alpha, lower bar, here's a two cell, you can take, well, pullbacks, y pullbacks, and what Johnston's definition required was that in KD, you can fill this R alpha. What, that, what does that mean? It means that not only R alpha bar, but also this iso two cell. Right? If you have questions, just ask now because... <laughs> This is basically codomain functor at level of two categories. Yeah, so this is a much simpler now. You can fill this, and this is definition of uh, vibration of two, vibration in two categories. Uh, aha, I, this definition is not complete. I lied to you because it has also some coherence conditions. Because suppose that you have uh, one two-cell here, another two-cell that come to this, right? Which basically means you have composable morphism in B, like as generalized uh, uh, more uh, objects of B, um, and what happens when you lift these two cells? So basically, what is the relationship between composition of two cells, lift of composition of two cells, and uh, composition of lifts? Yeah, lift of composition. Yeah. Okay. So I, I intentionally didn't want to express with this diagram because they are monstrous, uh, but since now we have these nice diagrams here, I can just say. Here, so these are the actions of vibration. This completes the definition. You want to say alpha lies over alpha bar, uh, which in this diagram basically means alpha really lies over alpha, bar, alpha lower bar. But in this diagram here, it means the whole thing commutes nicely. It's coherent. Okay. Uh, yeah, as I, as I was saying, that composition of composable two cells, the lift of them is uh, isomorphic to composition of lifts. Lift of identity is isomorphic to identity of the lifts. Sorry, this is wrong. Identity of the lifts. Uh, if you whisker, lift whisker with alpha, what, th what does that mean? Uh, well, it means that if you, whisk, you, you put one cell in here and you whisker alpha with that, what happens at the level of lifts, right? So that's also a coherence condition. It's just whiskering of the lifts. And the Cartesian uh, property of the lift is actually for part five. Um, it says that uh, any, oh, if you have vertical one cells in KD, uh, in K, sorry, K uh, arrow, and if you have any two cell, it factors through alpha, which basically means that alpha is Cartesian, if you write it, in, for example, two category of categories. Okay. So, right, so far I haven't, uh, we gave some description of Johnson's vibration, but what I want to do is something else. Yeah, I want to get a better characterization, which is like this, okay? Um, so in this proposition, as you see, I'm using KD and this functor to say that zero cells in KD, which are one cells in K, when are they vibration in terms of Johnston? And I will formalize everything in sense of KD base and K, basically, right? Now for doing that, I need to know certain things. For example, I need to know what does Cartesian lift mean with respect to two functors. And I need to know um, Cartesian two cells. What does Cartesian two cell mean? Because here is Cartesian two cell. So I'm going to define them now. Uh, so if you have a two-functor between two, two categories, K and 
and C, X and C, you would say that a one cell F in the top category X is Cartesian with respect to this P, right? Whenever for each zero cell W, uh, this diagram is a body pullback in two category of categories. Uh, the people who are familiar with just Grotendieck vibrations, uh, there's a characterization of uh, Cartesian uh, one cells actually, Cartesian one cells with respect to just one functor uh, like this, but this is only a pullback when you are at the level of categories. When you go at the level of two categories, well, this, this becomes Y pullback. Uh, but if you write this down, what it, this means for this diagram to be Y pullback, you get uh, certain liftings here up to isomorphism. So what does that mean? It means F is Cartesian. Whenever you can fill this diagram up to isomorphism, yeah, you find a lift of H, again, up to isomorphism. Then you come down, it's, there is an isomorphism B top. So anything that you had before, which was up to a strict equality, becomes up to uh, coherent isomorphism. And same with uniqueness. I don't want to waste my time here, so let's go. Uh, but if you have any question about this, ask, ask at the end of the talk. Uh, right, now what, what does it mean for two cells to be Cartesian? So far I just gave the description of one cells to be Cartesian with respect to a two functor. What does it mean for a two cell to be Cartesian with respect to functor P? Well, it means it's locally uh, vibration. So for any uh, zero cells, X and Y in X, this is, so this bit is a category because we are working in two categories and this bit is a home category and we ask this PXY to be uh, Grotendieck vibration. But it looks like this basically at the level of two cell. It says when you, whenever you have alpha and you have any beta two cell in X, where is X, X, and you project them down to C, and suddenly you see you have some gamma, you can fill this down, then you can find uniquely actually here, the gamma, gamma tilde, such that uh, these two cells commute. So beta after gamma tilde is alpha. Okay, so we now have everything that we want to do, and there's a theorem, or it's not a prop it's proposition, lemma, whatever you want. It's not theorem, really. It's not deep. Uh, it's just rewriting information. Uh, so you want to say a one cell in K is a Johnston vibration in the sense that I defined previously. If uh, for any uh, zero cell in here of this form, this has a Cartesian lift in KD. So if you have something in K, which is one cell, you can lift it up. This code or base doesn't really matter here. It's actually a Grotendieck vibration, so it's a local vibration of one categories. And uh, whiskering on the left preserves Cartesian two cells in KD. These are the conditions. Um, and later we will use this version of uh, fi vibrations internal to by categories to describe what are vibrations in two categories of topoi. So we don't use Johnston because it's a it's a nightmare to work it. I tried that. Uh, it's not that easy. Uh, right. Okay. Now, just a remark. This is not entirely novel. I mean, uh, this has been worked out actually by, uh, this is a piece of sort of Australian category theory. Uh, Mitchell Buckley, oh, oops, uh, who was a student of Ross Street. Uh, they defined fiber two categories and bi-categories. And this is their definition, right? Which is very, very similar to what I presented about Johnson Uh But the fact is that they want for every, uh, let me see what's uh, right. So basically every, for every X, you have all of this condition. In the case that I presented, uh, this X has had to be a vibration, a Johnson vibration, so that this is true. So if every, basically zero cell in uh, K, KD, X plus KD, uh, is a Johnson vibration, then it becomes a Buckley vibration in this sense. But also this has been generalized to vibrations internal to tri-categories because there's a tri-category of bi-category and you can internalize this definition and this has been done by Bakovich independently of uh, Buckley's work. So as you see, we sort of related internal vibration in two categories to vibration of bi categories by, by this uh, co-domain, co-domain, uh, two functor. Okay, 
This was just cited. I'm not going to use this anymore. OK, now two categories of toposes. Uh, so this ETOP, uh, it's a two category whose one, zero cells are elementary toposes, whose one cells are geometric morphisms, and his two cells are natural transformation. And then I described how you can form this comma two category. So the two cells are sort of cylinders, right? And it has a subcategory depending on the class of display maps. But you can choose display maps to, to be bounded geometric morphisms. They are definitely uh, bicarable, and they have more properties that are even close on their composition. So this is, you can call it, uh, uh, it's comprehension of bicategories of toposes, sort of. Um, yeah. Yeah, so this is uh, the description based on that proposition that I gave you. So a bounded geometric morphism, P, E to S, which lives as a zero cell in here, is a vibration in the sense of Johnston. If it's vibrational zero cell in G top, in the sense that uh, this theorem was telling you. Yeah, this was definition. Right, okay, so we now know what uh, vibrations of topos are. <laughs> I mean, some algebraically, not, there's no intuition so far. Uh, but we want to get intuition from logic, right? So Steve talked about this already. Olivia talked about it before. Actually, precisely because uh, this, there's a pseudo functor, but not a functor here. That's why I put cat not set in here. So for any, uh, for any topos, you can consider T models of, sorry, models of theory T inside that topos. Uh, so it took, yeah, and then that gives you a category of models, basically. And this is a pseudo functor, not a functor, because the composition, uh, it's up to isomorphism here. Right. Now, if you have a theory or context, context basically is a sketch in the sense that Steve said, but uh, it's just uh, in the other direction, so that it matches the direction of toposes, right? So maybe I should write something on the board. Yeah, this is. So if you have two sketches, which are the same as objects as context. Uh, so these are, I call T0. Then a morph, a map between them actually, it's another sketch or context if you like, uh, with a map opposite direction. So I'm defining a, map, a context map from T0 to T1, but it becomes a sketch map from T1 to T, F, and some equivalence extension. And what do I mean by equivalence extension? I mean something that Steve told you about uh, the theory N of natural numbers and empty theory. At the level of toposes, it gives you equivalence of toposes, right? Uh, so you can formulate this syntactically, purely syntactically, and this is done in Steve's paper, Sketches for Arithmetic Universes. You don't have to refer to models at all, uh, which basically means you, you add universals and whatever, whatever is part of that uh, theory of coherent theory and free algebra. So when I write T here, I mean some sort of yeah, sketch or context, actually better context. Um, okay. So you can, uh, for any context, you can all, I talked about this, you can form category of models. Uh, and they're, they're also called elephant theories. This is uh, Steve's neologism, actually, I think. Uh, for two reasons, I mean, they come from, they are describing the sketches of elephant, but they are also big, I guess. I mean, is there any bigger ele animal? I, uh, well, I don't know. There's actually, a, in elephant, uh, there are some conditions you can put onto this, so you make a stack out of this. But, well, I'm not going to talk about that now. Uh, yeah, so these are the references. Uh -huh. There are some sort of elephant theories which don't come from sketches. And this is one example, which I'm going to use. Um, so the way that I define, uh, Steve mentioned classifying topos was basically a representing object for this, this functor, right? 
I mean, representing in the sense of pseudo functor representation. Now, you can form this pseudo functor T1 lower m, which is defined here. So you start with uh, a context extension T1 to T0, right? Uh, and you, you have a topos over S, a Grotenic topos over S, and you can construct this pseudo functor here, which for any topos E, I mean like this, gives you a strict models of T1 in E, which reduce to basically M, but then you have to pull M back to, to, to make this type check, right? So, like, yeah, so let's go on, and I will give an example of this later. Uh, It's, uh -huh. So here's an important theorem from uh, this paper that I'm going to use for the rest of the talk, which is not going to be too long. So if you have a context extension, um, and if you have a model of M, M is a model of T0 in S, in the base topos, right? Um, then since this is elephant theory, uh, and it's proved in this paper, that this special elephant theory actually has a classifying topos. Although it's not a context and it's not a theory, but it has a classifying topos, right? You can read the paper to see how it's done. You can also read elephants, uh, there are nice uh, results there. Um, right, anyway, so this has a classifying topos. And what happens is that for any geometric morphism, not necessarily bounded, if you pu by pull back this guy along F, you actually get a classifying topos of this elephant theory. So you basically pull M back along F lower bar, and that gives you the uh, elephant theory that classifies the body pull back topos. Right? Something that you expect, I mean, but well, there's a proof of this. <laughs> uh -huh. Now I'm going to, def so, so far, what finally I'm going to prove is that this guy is actually a vibration of toposes, this P, for certain extension maps, not all extension maps. And I want to clarify and emphasize which extension maps gives rise to vibration of toposes of this way, right? And I'm going to use some, uh, something called Chevrolet vibrations. Um, so this Two categories of context, actually. I didn't describe what are the two cells, but you can use uh, T arrow context to define what two cells of context are. And that forms a strict two category, unlike two category of toposes. So you have nice strict pullbacks uh, along context extension maps and nice, some nice uh, uh, strict limits. So that helps us to actually translate all of this construction of extension map of context to vibrations of toposes. Dealing with this uh, strictness of this two category of context makes life much easier. That's, that's the message, basically. So let me define uh, Chevrolet vibration. How much time do I have? By the, uh, five minutes, okay, maximum, okay. Good. Uh, right. Uh -huh. So I said that this two category of context actually has uh, nice finite limits which are actually in literature called pi limits, products, inserters, equifiers. This is work of Power and Robinson. They just characterize this. Uh, this is also proved in uh, Steve's paper that they actually exist in COM. Uh, and if you have this, then you know that COM objects exist. This is a lemma, which is nice to, as an exercise to prove. Uh, now, in this two category K, you call P to be a Chevrolet vibration, um, if this sort of morphism, unique morphism that you have from E arrow to B over P, which is lacks comma square in here, right? Because you see, you have a two cell from uh, D zero P arrow, which is like actually P E one to P E one, P zero to P E one. So you have a two cell that goes from here to here. And since this is lacks, that two cell factors through the cell in here. Um, and you say that P is actually a vibration inside this two category if gamma one has a right adjoint with co identity co-unit, which is a really strong condition to put in, but we want everything to be a strict, that's why we do this, yeah? Yeah. 
And you can dually define up vibrations. You ask for left adjoint to some other morphism P. Yeah, well, it's not important now. Um, right, this is actually, it was realized fir first by Gray, John Gray, that you can give description of grotonic vibrations in this sense, intrinsically to two categories. And then Ross Street obtained them as pseudo algebras for a slicing to KZ monad or something like this. But so, yeah. Uh, we were actually very much inspired by work of Rosa Street, by the way, to define uh, this context. Uh, I mean, vibration of context, uh, this. I mean, I spent two months reading that paper, and it was not a pleasant experience, but yeah. <laughs> well, it's a very deep paper, so. I mean, the fact that you can describe something vibration geometrical in terms of pseudo-algebras, that's something that comes first as a surprise. Yeah. Um, Okay, so the important bit is this. Uh, this doesn't work anymore. But I think it's run out of battery, X, but yeah, okay, it works. Any context, any extension map U in these two categories of context is actually carable. It's a lemma. And once you know this, uh, you can use Chevrolet characterization of vibration to say that U, a context extension, is a vibration if this gamma one this is the, the same thing as the last one I had before. Uh, has a right adjoint with identity co-units. Right? So not every context extension is a vibration. Some of them are. Some of them which have this property. Uh, so if the theorem that we proved is this. If you have an up vibrational or vibrational extension of context, and M is any model of T0, uh, in elementary topos S, then this map P, uh, which was introduced in here, where was it? A long time ago. Uh, yeah, here, this one, is actually a vibration of topos. Yeah. So let me give you now examples of this theorem, how it's used. Yeah, this is, uh, there's a draft of this paper, you can find it here. I was lazy, I should have put it on archive this week, but you know, like, uh, it's nicer to go around and have fun. But, <laughs> but no, but uh, I, I will put it on archive anyway, so you can find it on my GitHub page. Uh, there's a draft of this. Uh, right, so this is, uh, let's put diagram actually here. So this is T0 object classifier, right? And T1, you can extend it by just saying that, okay, I have one edge in the context to this object classifier, right? So this is your object classifier X, which is a sketch which has one node and nothing else. And then you extend it by, well, any sketch has one because Steve said they have finite limits, right? And then you add something in here, generically. Um, so this is T1, the extended one. Okay, what, what's happened? Oh, uh, by the way, all of these toposes that are involved in this diagram are S0 toposes, so the base is chosen already, S0. So these are all Grotendieck S0 toposes. Then this S0 X, X, small x, is basically uh, x, I mean capital X with constant x, and you know that that's obtained as, in the semantics, it's like a slice category at the level of category when you form that category. Um, so if you pull back this along model N, which we had in the diagram, then you obtain something like this, right? And we know that these are more, uh, what are called uh, local, local homeomorph, local, uh, local homeomorphism of toposes, which corresponds to, for example, so for spaces, this is, I mean, topological spaces uh, are local homeomorphism of spaces. And this becomes an up vibration. So this is the intuition we get. Local homeomorphisms are typical example of, of vibrations. There are certainly lots, lots of examples that I, don't, I want to understand because we certainly don't characterize all of vibrations or of vibrations of toposes, but this is my dream to characterize them. Uh, one more example, take T0 context of Boolean algebras and T1 extended by just a prime filter, a generic prime filter here. Um, again, by theorem this is I think in this case, vibration, because the maps go the other way around between the spectra. This becomes vibration, and when you pull this back along a model of T0, which is Boolean algebra in S, you get 
you get an honest Boolean algorithm S. And this uh, boy pullback gives you a spectrum of B. So you can uh, say this, I put this in quote, every fiber wise stone bundle is a fibration. Because the spec is a fiber which is stone. Uh, these are some lists that uh, I've worked out. And yeah, so, so for example, uh, you can have a theory that has a theory of categories and you extend it by torsor. And that becomes, at the level of classifying topos, as I described, becomes, uh, I think, a vibration of topos. Yeah, there are other examples too. Uh, these are the references. Somebody has, sorry Steve, your uh, last one. This is your, <laughs> this is the main, actually the main <laughs> thing that we had this, all of this lemma here. Right, <laughs> I don't know why. Yeah, okay. Thanks for your attention.